Yes, we are recording now. All right, David. And we were recording over there, too, so we could always just use the audio from the camera. Getting all technical up in here. This is crazy. Why don't you, uh, why don't you give my ass a countdown? All right. Not my ass, literally speaking. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Give my ass a countdown, David. Countdown? Okay. To my ass. You're going to have to come over here, this side of the table. <laughs> 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 That's it. Whisper, whisper to my ass. Two. Yeah. Then five, four. And we are back. We're back for another fantastic episode of Chronic Fatigue in the house. I'm Travis Cut, joined as always by my good friend David G. Dave Mo fucking G in the heezy. Dave, if you want to be a bastard about it, <laughs> <laughs> which I do, Dave. <laughs> All right. So I'm what's here. new, Dave? Here we are, twelve o'clock ish Friday. Well, this is new. Brand new podcast. Yeah. I know you've all been waiting for it. Yep. And finally, yep. it's in your subscriber box. It's, it's here on your browser window. However you're choosing to watch us, whether it's Podomatic, YouTube, whatever. All over the place, you know? It doesn't matter. Just fucking put our voice in your ears. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Warm it. up your bong. Sit yeah. down. Yeah. Sync this episode specifically to uh, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. It's trippy. It's it's fucked. When yeah. that song kicks in, when money kicks in, yeah. we're talking about getting high. Money! <laughs> you know, that's what that movie's actually about. I don't know if you know it, but uh, the true story of Wizard of Oz, it, it's kind of symbolically related to what was going on in the time that the book was written, as far as, you know, the yellow brick road. The ruby slippers were originally the silver slippers, as a matter of fact. Really? Which kind of has a lot to do with what was happening with silver and gold in the economy back in the time that the book was written. But that's a whole other story. I, I that is a whole other story. You know, it's, it's really interesting if you uh, get a chance. Uh, I don't remember what the movie was called. but All of our but, fans yeah. are potheads. Nobody's going to research that. Just take our word for it, folks. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Fucking cool, dude. Yeah, but it's not just uh, the dark side of Oz here. So it's, the, it's just uh, yourself and myself today. Yeah. So zombies and conspiracies, that's yeah. pretty much what we're limited to here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That's true. We got some good stuff planned. We have nothing planned. Just uh, just some microphones and some weed. They're pretty good microphones and great weed. So, yeah, yeah. Know. which is better, do you think, the mics or the weed? It's a nice combination of the two. Couldn't bad, we, too bad we couldn't fashion a pipe out of this microphone somehow, or a bong, and <laughs> just put the weed straight through the microphone. <laughs> And then breathe it out. So I kind of want to talk about the shit that I have to read before uh, the break. Those are some nice color printouts of Justin Bieber that you have there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I also have 28 other pages of printed out Justin Bieber stuff. How lovely. Um, right now, uh, my new favorite website is something called Christwire. I've talked to you about this before. A We've mentioned that on the show before, yeah. Um, it is just a, a repository of amazing facts that I think the general Canadian doesn't know about but I think the average hillbilly American racist is is well aware of David they are well aware of this website hmm. well I I'm only aware of it from what I've heard from you on previous episodes so tell um, me more they uh, they have such insightful articles as how to punish your homosexual child Mm -hmm. um, blacks, more... <laughs> I can't even read the title of it because it's so hilarious. Blacks, scarier at night? Question mark? Uh-huh. Camouflage factor. Yeah, I mean, fuck. It, it, they speak the truth. Does that mean that white people are scarier in the daytime? Probably. Yeah. White people are scary all the time, David. Yeah. I'm terrified of you right now. The white man. The white man. He's out to get you. So I printed out a couple pages here. It's really quick uh, because my reading skills are somewhat subpar. Um, basically, this is about the MTV Music Awards probably last year or uh, at least six months ago, I think. So when Kanye dissed Taylor Swift? <laughs> yep. And yep. Beyonce should have got that award, damn it. Damn that shit. Um, like I give a shit. Um, let's see. Should I, should I just read it or do we need more background information about Christ Wire, do you think? No, I think uh, 
we're up to date on that. Let's let's hear what we got. What do they got to say about the Beebster? Okay. Um, I should just say that this was definitely not written by y- yourself or myself. This is stuff we got off the internet. You need to go check this website out. Okay, it's disclaimer. Everybody needs to check out Christwire, especially if you live in Canada, because this is an American website. There is a picture of Justin Bieber in the MTV Music Awards. He's standing outside. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. And underneath, the caption says... In this picture, Bieber crosses his arms in a gang sign. This one means crisps, in quotation marks. There is a black gang in Los Angeles known as the Notorious L.A. Crisps. Crisps. (laughs) Sounds like a cereal flavor. Um, (laughs) They call themselves that because, one, they are black. Two, wear all black. And three, were founded by a black militant Crispus Atux, whatever the fuck that means. And they love extra crispy chicken from the colonel. (laughs) <laughs> the crisps. <laughs> now you're just being racist. All right, no, let's let's take it back. It's it's Black Friday. We're trying to keep everything, you know. African American Friday. Oh, pardon me. Okay, keep it politically Fuck correct asshole. here. My whole life. Anyway, David, let's continue. Here. All right, so that I mean, you, you could just chop that up to just being an ignorant paragraph. However, it goes on to continue. Despite being white. Justin Bieber is rich. It's hard to read this shit without laughing. Despite being white, Justin Bieber is rich and has millions of things that black gangs love more than money. Our screaming suburban daughters and their untouched innocence. Mm -hmm. This is why you must not let your daughters go to see Justin Bieber. The devil. Crisps attend his concert with other assortments of these praying black gangs, and they just want to dally our daughters in their Tell our daughters in their backside like they brag about on their rap videos. Exclamation point. Dally. That's a new one. That's that a I new one heard. for me, yeah. too. I don't even know what Dally that them in their backside. Ridiculous. Hmm. Justin Bieber is their bait at our daughters, the fish. Oh. Another exclamation Hook, point. Hook, line, and sinker. He was really trying to get the point across there. They want to haul in a good catch, and they play filet mignon with their fish caves. And make them rotten with sin. Wow. I don't even know what that means. They play filet mignon with their fish caves. A fish cave. Is that like a slang for like, a vagini? Well, I know if you saw South Park, fish sticks. If you like fish sticks, that means you're a gay fish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like fish sticks? <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah. It goes on to say, I hate how rappers exploit women, and I refuse to let Bieber's intentions go unknown to our parents. I cannot stress enough how black rappers are using them to get to our daughters. Look at him wear more of their clothing and make girls cheer and follow him, not knowing that over the next hill lies a gang of thugs waiting for them. Yeah, that's his, his crew, his wow. uh, producer and everything behind him. And, yeah. Now, now Bieber puts glasses back on and flirts with the next group of girls. He keeps the glasses handy because, remember, I, like, this fucking guy was even there. Like, I caught him smoking drugs, and his eyes are likely redder than a nervous illegal Indian Mexican. An Indian Mexican. Indian Mexican. It's just like they've ran out of fucking hate for Mexicans and Indians and just said, you know what? Fuck it. We're Merge just going to hate them. Merge hate them, them together and come up with a whole new thing to hate. Now, in his defense, his next paragraph goes on to say, don't call me a racist because I'm not. I'm American. Cool. Okay. I think I've heard that line used a couple times after people said some racist shit. It doesn't work all the time. No. Illegals are criminals, and what's even worse is this sicko, and you don't dare try to play the high road when his boy is helping thugs take our daughters and corrupt them with Mexican drug orgies. Yeah, so he's he's a bait. I actually did see an article about Justin Bieber, too, him being actually like a 40-year-old man with uh, some kind of disease. So he just Like Webster shaves. disease? Exactly, so he... He, it's, he's a, actually a pedophile that's preying on young, young females. And this article from Christware just backs that theory right up. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I've always kind of questioned this guy. I, I noticed he's getting a lot of support through our broadcasting, especially up here in Canada where he's from. Yep. You know, they, they talk about Justin Bieber on the CBC, calling him Justin Beaver and making all kinds of... You know, vagina references to a prebubescent boy. So, <laughs> I would not be surprised 
if Justin Bieber had a vagina. Would yeah. that surprise you, David? Well, that could make a lot of sense. And he's really just like a 40-year-old woman yeah, with no breasts. N- no, no uh, well, true. I think he's just a boy who okay. happens to have a vagina. Uh, yeah. Do you see where I'm going with this? Well, he's got a fairly high-pitched voice. He does. And, yeah. He does. So that's our first reading of Christ Wire. I hope you enjoyed it because this shit is fucking ridiculous. Um, I'm going to try to maybe read out a little some something, something from Christ Wire every every week because it is comedy gold for people that are smart and it is news for people who are fucking retarded and uh, it's religious. It, yeah, no religious. Shit. Not to plug any HBO people <laughs> or anything. <laughs> Um, yeah. So that that's that. We'll try to do one. Maybe maybe we'll read how to punish your homosexual child next week because that's pretty funny. But well, uh, one way you could punish your homosexual child is sign him up for underage pole dancing classes here in Vancouver. Excellent, David. I'm so glad you <laughs> brought that up. Why don't you quickly give the rundown on what that's all about? I was just going through some news articles and noticed that there's a, a yoga place here in town, in Vancouver and Burnaby, actually that. Uh, for pole dancing classes, and uh, they just decided to open up their class to. That was a good time, ding. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> they open up their class to underage girls, and from what I heard, they have a two and a half year old young lady in there at uh, getting an early start there. So I, I, hopefully to lure in people like Justin Beaver. And, <laughs> you know, I think that's what they're going for. But. So this is not a joke. This is a real. Real thing, right? Yeah, this is this is the reality. The place is called uh, Tantra Fitness. Tantra so fitness. if you have a three-year-old girl, then send her over there, and she could learn to work the pole. <laughs> <laughs> now, why do you think, David, would a parent put their let's, let's just let's say five, let's say a five-year-old girl mm-hmm. into a pole dancing class? Well, I guess the the logic is that it's just fitness, you know. It's just fitness. That's they, they don't they associate it with anything exotic or erotic or anything like the rest of society does for whatever reason. It, it's, but how can they not associate it with something erotic? Do you know what I mean? It's like it would be like teaching Karma Sutra under the guise of exercise. So do, do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I have seen many a pole dance and I have never once watched one and been like, that's not very erotic. It seems to be more uh, physically lab- uh, laborious than it is uh, erotic. Like, it's, it's always erotic, is, is my bottom line. Yeah, yeah. It's a pole here. We're dealing with a pole. And uh, in the words of Chris Rock, when you have a kid, your main goal and your only reason in life is to keep it off the pole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess if you have a daughter, anyway. Or, 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 a, boy, or a guy. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. That, that's kind of contradictory to... To what his idea of that is, I guess. The, these we should, women we are like, get a, her on the pole yeah. as young as possible, and you know. We should do a segment called "A White Guy Quotes Chris Rock" every week, <laughs> and he can just say some of Chris Rock's jokes, yeah. and we can just edit out the bad. Keep stuff. off the pole. Keep off the pole. <laughs> um, yeah. When you first told me about this, I, uh, I don't know, man. It just. You brought up the point that it's just, it's hurting. It's hurting society more than it is helping society. Yeah, it's not helping the family unit particularly. And I just, I don't even know what to say because it's it's like reading Christ Wire. I feel like the story it's, it speaks for itself and how yeah. ludicrous it actually is. Yeah, it's kind of out there. Um, I mean, but hey, what can you do? They This is a free country. You have every right to teach underage girls how to be provocative <laughs> but i don't think you do though like is yeah. that a right in canada well the, the the names for some of their classes for the girls are like promiscuous girl and no the way. pussycat workout and you know she says that it's not it's not teaching anything erotic to the yeah, youngsters right but she's making a good amount of money off it so apparently there's a there's a market out there for that and, i guess a yeah. market for pedophiles yeah like i don't i don't get it and Just because I find it incredibly erotic doesn't mean I, I condone it. Yeah, well, I'm going to head down there with a stack of 20 bills and make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> make it rain on those little tots. That's what we should uh, do. Oh, man. We need to get a camera, and we need to just do, like, an ambush where we just run in and throw <laughs> money at these little tots. Where's Candy? Guys. Next up, she's coming over here. All right. Everybody, yeah. give it up for Candy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. that's fucking ridiculous, dude. 